Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. Uh, I think the first thing I should say is congratulations. Uh, you should be proud of yourself. You deserve to be proud of yourself. This is um, <clears throat> this is a great success that you have achieved, uh, and it will help you in the future when you look back on it and realize if I did that, I can do something else. Um, one of the uh, I'll tell you a little story about. Uh, when my son was born, <clears throat> I was working in Mexico, and the first 18 months were horrible. I was working, I was studying, and I wasn't sleeping. So I remember talking to, uh, to my boss at the time, and I said, this is just the first 18 months, isn't it? He said, no, this is for life. <laughs> and um, I will say that to you as well. This is an amazing achievement. You've graduated, you have a diploma, but it's not over. Studying, learning, especially today, is for life. Um, so I'm gonna make a confession here that I wouldn't have made 20 years ago. I don't have a college degree. Um, it just wasn't in the cards. I was moving around, I put my job first, and, um, and I took a big risk. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone because it is anxiety every single day. You know, will I be stopped from moving forward because I don't have a degree? Um, you know, all the things that happen in, in a corporation. Um, what I did do is I upskilled myself. So as I was growing up in the organization, I would take courses. I enrolled in a university and took accounting courses because I knew accounting was important. Uh, I took financial management. I took marketing. I took HR. Things that I knew I would have to know if I wanted to move up in the organization. So some people think that that is um, a catalyst, that that was a catalyst for my success, uh, that because I didn't have a degree, I had something I needed to prove and I worked harder. Maybe. Um, but to this day, I wish I had that degree, um, even though I've gotten the jobs. I just, I would like to have that accomplishment. Uh, so, upskilling myself. It, this is interesting because I sat in, in the corporate world with MBA, Harvard MBAs. Um, and I would realize from time to time that I knew more about them, about, say, financial management. Why? Because I took those courses to learn. I took those courses to survive. I think they may have taken a course to just check the box. And I've heard people say that, oh, I have an MBA from Harvard, I'm not good at finance, so. And I'm not good at this. Um, but I've got the, the diploma. Um, the future is about skills, not, about, not only about diplomas. Diplomas are good because, as Fado said, you learn how to learn. Everyone has a different way of learning. You know, you, you, you know how to learn. That's important. That's an important skill. Um, the second thing is uh, you have the same advantage as anyone else. Now you are on par with anyone regardless of where they graduated. And I'll, I'll tell you uh, in a second. People look out 2040 and say, what skills? What skills will people need in 2040? And the first thing that comes to mind is Python or, you know, coding, algorithms. Actually, it's persuasiveness is the first one. The second one is empathy. The third one is critical thinking. 
So you don't have to be a data scientist. In fact, data scientists are going to need a lot of help, management, leadership, because that's, that's not their thing. They want to sit in front of a screen, um, which is great. But it is a, it's, it's in demand. People want leaders. They're looking for leaders. They can find the, the people with Python. But leadership has never been important, more important than that. So uh, when I ask people how many skills they have, they usually say four. The average person has about 30 skills. And if you can determine that, understand yourself to the point where you know that, things that are skills that you would never imagine, for example, listening is a skill. And if someone has a job whose role is to listen to customers but they don't listen, they've got a problem. They need that skill. Um, so, let me tell you what I've learned about, about business, about moving ahead, um, that perhaps I didn't have to study, or I didn't have to upskill in this, but I figured it out by observing leaders, observing really good leaders. And let me tell you, I had great leaders in Mexico, in the U.S., and Asia. Uh, I observed great leaders here in the U.S., black, white, Asian, uh, tall, uh, short, thin, husky. Um, there is extrovert, introverted. There is no model, no formula for, to, to determine who is a leader. You don't have to... You don't have to have traits that you were born with. You can develop them. Let me tell you three that I have observed um, that every leader I've met has. They may have a lot of others, uh, but these three perhaps aren't as obvious. Uh, the first one is self-awareness. Self-awareness. Um, it took me about 20 to 25 years. Uh, let's say less. It took me 15 to 20 years to be comfortable with the fact that I wasn't good at everything. That I was good at some things and I wasn't good at other things. When you get to the point of self-awareness, where you are comfortable where you are, you are comfortable with who you are, what you know. You don't have to. You, you don't have to uh, uh, try to convince people that you can do it all. Um, then you start really leading. Um, I'll tell you a story about um, someone who I've. I've admired, and the reason is I, I was born in Havana, Cuba. W when I was running the Mexican business, a Fortune magazine hit my desk uh, when we had magazines back then, and um, it had a Cuban on the cover. It said he was the chairman and CEO of Coca-Cola. I couldn't believe it. I was in my 30s, and I say, hey, if he can do it, I can do it. Maybe there is an opportunity. Um, and I followed him like no one else. I read everything I could about Coke, and he became the symbol of what I wanted to be. Um, self-awareness. Once you feel comfortable with self-awareness, you surround yourself with people who know things that you don't know. And once you are self-aware, and you don't take yourself overly serious, you become vulnerable. Humanity. People love when their leader can be either self-deprecating, or if the leader isn't good at something that he knows or she knows that the team laughs about it from time to time, 
They love that. They don't want to report to a, a robot. They want to report to a human, someone who feels, someone who has a, a problem, something, uh, someone who worries about things just like they do.